please do not, you know, if some of you, you know, are watching certain television stations or listening to certain radio programs, please do not believe this notion that somehow I'm out to take everybody's guns away. And I'm not here to take away your guns. They want to create the fear that the government is actually going to come after guns because that helps sell more guns, and it has across the country. And I think a lot of people that are out there that are fearing what we're saying right now think that we're going to try taking their guns. We're not. This is why the NRA puts up videos that try to scare Americans. They go to emotions. They go to fear. You know, uh, people want to take away your guns. Nobody wants to take away people's guns. We just don't want to be any different than Canada. Now, if you own an AR-15, keep it. Continue to use it responsibly and safely. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. It will be voluntary. It won't be, hell yes, we'll come get your no, guns. No, it's, it's mandatory. No, it's, it's not voluntary. I, I want to make sure that we make the distinction here. It, it is mandatory. It will be the law. You will be required to comply with the law. So. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. The other night at the Democratic debate, Beto O'Rourke exclaimed that, hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15s. And then he later clarified when he was asked that this would not be optional, it would be mandatory, and civilians would have to comply or be met with the force of the law. And so ignoring the Democrats have long promised that no one's coming to take your guns, ignoring that even Beto himself had promised that not too long ago, it would seem that their true intentions, of which we have long been aware, are beginning to surface. And we've always known that it's about taking the guns. They used to hide it, but I guess now they've decided that the culture has been brainwashed enough to where it wouldn't actually be political suicide like it would have been back in the day. So uh, what we're going to do here is run through three reasons why confiscating AR-15s is a stupid and terrible idea. And you might be thinking, well, John, why not five reasons? It seems like a nicer number to work with because, dear viewer who has followed me on Twitter and turned on notifications and subscribed, all that fun stuff, we don't even need that many reasons. Everything can basically be summed up in three reasons. So here we go. And also, I've got a video where I go through every argument in favor of gun control and explain why they're all wrong, so there will be a link to that in the description. Check that out, but reason number one, it is unconstitutional. In an ideal America, this would be enough reason for the plan to be disregarded, but unfortunately, we are far away from an ideal America. You know, at the same debate, Joe Biden challenged Kamala Harris on the constitutional legitimacy of her plan to use executive power to enact gun control, and her response was literally to laugh at him and say, Joe, yes, we can. And then she proceeded to recite a rehearsed monologue during which she mentioned that she's been hugged by victims of tragedy before and therefore she can effectively do as she pleases without regard to our constitution. It's the classic authoritarian strategy that we've seen throughout history. You simply use emotions to justify your circumventing of the rule of law and pretty soon you've amassed more power than you were ever intended to have by the design of the system. But by that point it's too late. And the Supreme Court has affirmed that the Second Amendment extends to weapons like the AR-15. They affirmed this in the District of Columbia versus Heller ruling in 2008. They wrote that the Second Amendment extends to all instruments that constitute bearable arms, even those that were not in existence at the time of the founding. That would be the AR-15. And that the Second Amendment includes those weapons, quote, in common use at the time, end quote, for, quote, lawful purposes like self-defense, end quote. The AR-15 is the most popular rifle in the country. There are millions of them in the hands of law-abiding citizens, therefore classifying them as in common use, therefore protecting protecting them under the scope of the Second Amendment. And because of that, any attempt to interfere with a civilian owning an AR-15 is an infringement upon that civilian's God-given rights, and therefore that interference is unjust and invalid. Reason number two, it's ineffective. This idea of, oh, if we just ban the assault weapons, all of our problems would be solved. It's a nice idea, but it's not backed up statistically. The fact of the matter is that assault weapons, for which we still have yet to establish a legal definition that encompasses features beyond those that are purely aesthetic, according to the FBI, all rifles, including AR-15s, AK-47s, are used to commit just 403 murders every year. And you might be thinking, 403 murders? Well, that's a lot of murders, sure. But when taken within the context of all the homicides in this country, rifles are only used in about 2.5% of all murders and only about 3.5% of all gun murders. They're so infrequently used that to pretend that you're going to put a dent in the murders by taking away rifles from people is just silly. If they really wanted to stop people from getting killed, you'd think they'd go after the handguns. Granted, those are next, but you get the point. And the way around that is they'll say, well, oh, we're trying to prevent these mass shootings from happening, which warrants the question of why do you only want to stop the mass shootings? Why are you not trying to stop the shootings in general? And the true answer to that question is that these mass shootings cause people to be more emotional because they're national tragedies. And that emotion is what enables them to capitalize for the sake of promoting policy that strips away your rights piece by piece. 
All of that, regardless of the fact that there is virtually no evidence to suggest that banning these weapons would have any effect on these national tragedies or violent crime in general. And there's a lot of reason for that, namely that there are more of these guns than you will ever be able to take back. People in this country like to make their own guns for fun, for craps and laughs. You're assuming 100% of your police force is going to follow orders. You're forgetting that when people want to hurt people, they generally find a way. Timothy McVeigh killed 168 people with homemade bombs using items that you can purchase at any home improvement store. Evil will always prevail unless it can be countered by the force of good. And when you take that force of good away from your citizens, whom are also good, you're leaving them vulnerable to the effects of that evil. And perhaps you are that evil since you're knowingly putting them in that situation in the first place. And reason number three, you're gonna get shot. I'd like to clarify, this is not a threat, nor is it an endorsement of violence. I've always condemned all forms of violence on this channel, and I will always continue to do so. This is simply an acknowledgement of the fact that you've got hundreds of militias with tens of thousands of members in this country. You've got millions more patriots who are willing to die on this hill. If you send people door to door to confiscate firearms, they're not going to hand them over. Don't tread on me, alphabet boys. Are you trying to incite an uprising? Because if you were trying to incite an uprising, this is exactly where you would turn your attention. And ask yourself this question, on the net, how many lives do you really think you would save? Let's say you take the guns, you reduce our country's gun murder rate to zero. We've got about 10,000 gun murders a year, you reduce it to zero, congratulations. Now, let me ask you this. Is it worth everyone that you had to either kill or put in jail to accomplish it? On the net, how many lives were saved? Or was it a net loss of life? And the disturbing thing is that they would view it as justified. They would be okay with those lives being lost because those lives stood in the way of their utopian vision and therefore they had to be forcefully removed. It's the same core component of leftist ideology that we've seen lead to the deaths of tens of millions of people throughout history. And that is that the individual is lesser than the society, but more specifically, the goals of the government of that society. And because of that, the rights of the individuals can be violated in the name of the greater good, which is almost invariably determined by the government. This this is exactly what we're seeing now. It doesn't matter if you're a law-abiding gun owner. All that matters is that some people aren't. And because of that, your rights are now going to have to be violated. Forget shall not be infringed. The infringement began decades ago. Now they're moving towards total confiscation. First, the assault weapons. Then when that inevitably has no effect, they'll want to take the semi-automatics too. It doesn't matter that it's your God-given right because they believe that they are God. They know what's best for society. They know what's best for you and for your family and what they say must go. Otherwise, they're going to shoot your dog and throw you in jail. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel, because we're about to break 100,000. What's happening at 100,000, you might ask? I don't know. Maybe merchandise. Maybe live shows. Maybe exclusive content. Uh, maybe the Heck Off Kami newsletter. Maybe a website. Who even knows? Y you think I haven't been planning this for years? Everything I do, a chess move. You know? I'm not even playing chess. I'm playing like like 4D interdimensional settlers of Catan. That's what I'm doing. Some big brain stuff. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.